Hello everyone and welcome back to Mass Effect 3! In the last episode we went exploring around the galaxy and got some Prothean artifacts and, uh, from the Hades Nexus. This episode we're going to be returning them here as well as having some more conversations. Then don't worry, at the end of this episode we will be going on with the actual main plot itself. First off we have our friend James Vega here who is alarmingly shirtless. James? Commander, what brings you down here? I was about to ask you that. Well, after our little chat, ow, I made up my mind. I'm gonna join the N7 program. And you're celebrating by getting a tattoo? <laughs> sort of. See, there's no official channels to go through right now. So, I guess this is my way of making it official. Technically, I'm just an N7 recruit, but, you know, I figure with you as my training officer, how could I fail? Right? I'm flattered, but I wouldn't exactly say I'm training you. Not officially, but what the hell is in this goddamn war? I'm just saying, whether you like it or not, you're my direct superior, and you're N7. So I take my lead from you, and you know, I'll take whatever advice you got. Really? Sure. The good advice. Don't take this lightly, Vega. I'm not, and I won't. I know it seems like I don't take things seriously, but when I commit to something, I fully commit. Clearly. Hey. I won't let you down. Don't just tell me. Show me. Yes, ma'am. You know, that's gonna sting for a few days. You gonna be ready for duty? Always. Hey, maybe we should get matching. You want me to get an N7 tattoo? N7? Sure. Or you could get my name done. Somewhere special. You're such a tease, Vega. Who, me? You ever gonna make good on all this flirting? Uh, I was just... I didn't mean to... You know, I was just... <laughs> That's what I thought. Later, Lieutenant. Later. Ah! Careful! Ah, uh, it annoys me. There's no way to... St I like that conversation, kind of, but it, there's no way to stop Shepard making, like, the... Uh, you ever gonna make good on all this flirting line? Which is... No. No, don't even encourage the creepy little slimy bugger. Um... But with that out of the way, we also have a Prothean Sphere that this guy told us where we could find it. I found a Prothean Sphere on Gay Hinnom. Contact the Alliance and tell them Commander Shepard asked them to pay you for it. Yes, thank you. I'll call them right now. I don't even understand how that quest worked. He told us to get a sphere. We get, got the sphere. We returned to him and said, you've got a sphere. The Alliance will pay you for it. And then we got paid for that. Baffling. Um... With that, though, let's head over first to the Presidium Commons. I don't think I'd ever noticed those, like, space pigeons there before. Huh. What do you know? But yes, here, um, we've got two things to do. We've got a quest to pick up and one to drop off. Uh, and to pick up, we have this Solarian up Don't here. The Krogan are the only race that can fight on the toxic world, so they need support. Well, ideally, something like a Cacleosaur. They're good in mountains, immune to toxins, ferociously loyal to their riders. Yes, they'd be ideal. Unfortunately, they were driven to extinction during the Rachni War. So, unless we can engineer something new, Krogan on Toxic Worlds will have to fight on foot without support. I mean, that's what vehicles are for, surely, so you don't have to, you know, use a dead dinosaur. Uh, either way, uh, if we head down below where we are now, we can return the Obelisk of Karza to this researcher. I've recovered the Obelisk of Karza. It's waiting for you in Bay D-24. You have? It's amazing! Thank you, Commander. That's going to help immeasurably with some very sensitive work. I've always assumed he's talking about the Crucible there, because that's why something that can translate between different languages of the Protheans would be particularly useful, and it would be about as sensitive as he is describing. With that done, it's time to head and find ourselves a Cacleosaur fossil. Um, so, let's head out to the galaxy map. So, our goal this time is the Argos Row Cluster here. And we start, these all have like cool mythological names, we start in the Hydra system. And I want to start with this planet here, Canrum. The name of this does sound familiar from Mass Effect 1, it may have been on this. 
Canrum is a small, rocky world with a trace atmosphere of methane and krypton. Its surface is, con is, con uh, its surface is mainly composed of magnesium and silicates with deep deposits of carbon. Just deposits, not deep deposits, I made that up. Canrum was the site of the Warlord Shiago's defeat by Turian peacekeeping forces during the Krogan Rebellions. While this band was not especially powerful, Shiago was a female warlord, and one of the few remaining fertile females at that. Um, which is weird. Oh, no yeah, if it was during the Krogan Rebellions, I suppose it was at the end of the Krogan Rebellions, because I always think of the Krogan Rebellions as being ended by the Genophage, there wouldn't be many... F a female, a fertile female wouldn't be that much of a, sh a a shock during the Rebellions, I think. Anyway, she had, though, viciousness and cunning, and she had, she had though, viciousness and cunning, and parlayed her unique value into a position of power. Krogan males competed for the right to join her band and ally with her. When Shiago's death was announced, ventral male admirers near and far poor blood oaths against the participating Turian crews. In the end, several thousands of the Turian participants were killed in open combat or through assassination. To this day, many Krogan proudly complain that they have the blood of Shiago. That was also mentioned in Mordin's song, the for she is the Krogan queen, she is a rather the Krogan queen, she talks about the blood of Shiago in her veins. But that gets us a little asset that's handy. Um, up next, we will go to the Gorgon system. It's very spread out, the Argus Rogue one. You've got a lot, of, a lot of ground to cover here. So starting off in Gorgon, we want this little planet here, which is Cameron. That's a weird one. Cameron is a terrestrial world with a thin atmosphere of carbon dioxide and argon. The surface is scorching hot, primarily composed with of iron with deposits of nickel. Like well, Cameron is tightly locked to the blue giant, forever looking into the face of the Gorgon. <laughs> nice. They were just building that thing with tightly locked planets, weren't they? Um, but we've got some useful crap on here as well. Which is advanced power relays. Wonderful, and that is it, I believe, for the Gorgon system. Let's head now all the way up north, and we're actually going to be surprisingly close on fuel. And north makes no sense in space, but let's head space north to the Phoenix system. So here we've got a couple of things to do. Uh, it's pointing us at the right, actually, over here at um, Pinnacle Station, which was home of the DLC from Mass Effect um, 1. Um, the asteroid-based Pinnacle Station was originally constructed by the Turians and functioned as a concealed command center during the Krogan Rebellions. It has been retrofitted as a military facility for a high level, all high-level special operations teams employed by the Council. The station's combat simulator allows teams to train under a variety of hazardous conditions. Wonderful, indeed, if we scan it. Signal confirmed. Then we can get to know if I meant to scan it before landing on it, but there we go. Well, before talking to it. Not talking to it, but you know what I mean. Now, we've got another two scans to make, and it's going to be surprisingly difficult. I'm going to try and see if I can hit both with a single scan. Nailed it. So, we've got the planet Intaise here, an atmosphere extremely similar to Earth's made Intaise an early candidate for human colonization. However, prohibitively high temperatures and an arid climate have proven a hindrance to terraforming and agriculture. A few human cities were founded, but the majority of the human population on Intaise remained scattered across vast deserts, operating wind farms and geological research stations. And from there we get our fossilized cacliosaur. Wonderful. And finally, from here, we have a little bit of fuel. Quite a lot of fuel, actually, which will be important for us to actually make it back. Fun fact about the Pinnacle Station DLC that I learned recently. So there's, they're releasing the remastered Max Effect trilogy, which will be coming out pretty soon, if it isn't already out by the time this airs. Um, and it's got everything in it, all the DLCs, except for no Pinnacle Station. Um, and the reason for this is, is very amusing. Uh, they lost it. Uh, they just lost the source code for the original Pinnacle Station thing and reverse engineering it from what they have, like from the actual published version, would be a lot of time and effort, and so Pinnacle Station won't be in it. <laughs> Which is just really funny that a major company like Bioware can just lose that much data. Um, but also the Pinnacle Station DLC was kind of crap, so we're not missing a huge amount. Bugger, it's loud every time. Um, right, with that, let's head back to the commons. So first off, we can return the cacliosaur fossil to this bloke. Actually, I found a cacliosaur skull preserved in amber. Maybe you could clone it, or... You're kidding? You're kidding. Seriously? Well, um, if, if the genetic material is intact, we could... Hmm. We've got cloning facilities on Sarkesh. Cacliosaur genes were remarkably pliable. Cloning might be effective. And it makes sense enough, like... Well, they used to use them in the Krogan Rebellions, which was like a thousand... One thousand two hundred years ago-ish, so... We have viable DNA from woolly mammoths. Uh, we, were, uh, we were older than that, so it's it's not absurd to actually think about cloning one of them. It's not like cloning a dinosaur, which is very, very different. Uh, anyway, time for a couple of 
conversations, question mark? Perhaps not, I'm actually going to do some shopping first. So here at Agor Munitions, we can pick up a whole heap of shite. We can pick up pistol scope, SMG scope, SMG heatsink, pistol piercing mod, pistol high caliber barrel, SMG ultra light materials, and SMG high velocity barrel. And don't relax yet, future doctor, while you're editing, because we've also got a load of crap to pick up from Cipertine. Um, assault rifle precision scope, sniper rifle piercing 4, sniper rifle extended 4, assault rifle omniblade 2, and Casa fabrication shoulders. Oh, and we've still got 10 grand left. We're getting towards the end of, of, of what we can purchase, as you can see. These vigilizers are starting to fill in now, which is great. Um, we've still got a huge chunk of the game left, but for a lot of it, there's just not... Up weapons and upgrades kicking around, so we can actually get most of it well before the end of the game. Let's have a chat with Liara. You sure you don't want to do something a little more exciting? I love this part of the Presidium. It reminds me of where I grew up. Where's that? Armali, back on Thessia. My mother and I lived beside a park. I spent hours there. Doing what? <laughs> Reading, exploring. Getting in trouble digging for ruins in the grass. <laughs> You're kidding. I was very young. Yeah, that's actually pretty cute. No one else thought it was funny. Oh, the lecture my mother gave me. But she did buy me my first history book the next day. I miss her, Shepard. I question your character if you didn't. I suppose. I don't often talk about it. Hey. You'll stop grieving when you want to. Strangely, that's comforting. Thank you, Shepard. I wish we could spend more time together like this. Just friends. It'd be nice. And who knows? Maybe you'll settle down after this. You don't really see me going into civilian life, do you? No. But I guess that's one more reason we should keep in touch. Someone to share a few secrets with, now and then? You got it. Another really nice conversation. It's like, I think the squad mates who've been present with you throughout Mass Effect, like, 2 and 3, 1, one and 2, uh, are the ones to just have the best conversations in this, just because they're really fleshed out characters and they're just really believable. It's where Mass Effect is most powerful, is it's, it's characters that it's built over hundreds of hours of, like, gameplay and, like, three games. Um, just generally works really nicely and just makes it all feel really, really believable. Um, I've lost where I'm going because I was, I was literally in the middle of talking about that and was going to say, and, and here is another character from Mass Effect 1 we can have a nice conversation with as well. It's just as good as that last one. Um, but I've lost her. Ah, here she is. Wonderful. Uh, so let's have a chat with Tally. Of course. We can have ships at the colony in 36 hours. Do you need medical support? No, evacuating the colony is more than enough. Thank you, Ambassador. Ambassador? I'm coordinating actions for the fleet while we're here. Evacuating colonies, bolstering Turian defense lines. Huh. I think it was right here. Three years ago to the day. What? This was where Saren's assassins fired at me. I'd just gotten to the Citadel. I didn't think I needed my barriers up. My mistake. Saren had assassins after you? Right. I disabled the Geth and found that recording that proved he was working with the Reapers. I went to Ilium and tried to inform the authorities, but Saren's mercenaries attacked me. I barely escaped. I stowed away on a Turian freighter and came out here. I thought I was safe. You never told me about this. How bad was it? Got me in the arm. They used polonium rounds. I was running a fever in minutes. It was the first time I'd been really hurt on my pilgrimage. I ran to the council embassy, asked for protection, offered the data on Seren. The Turian clerk called me Soot Rat. He threatened to have me tossed off the station if I didn't leave. I wish that clerk could see you now. He just did. That was him back there. I don't think he remembers me. And you're assisting him in spite of that? This war is too big for old grudges. You showed me that. We're at peace with the Geth. I can't waste my time on a Turian who made me angry. Besides, it all worked out. I made it to the wards. You found me. Happy ending. 
And now the Turians will get the aid they desperately need. I nearly reminded him who I was. Made him apologize, rubbed his nose in it. Maybe he and I both needed to grow up a little. The difference is that you helped when it counted. Thanks, Shepard. So did you. I quite like that, and that's a, that's what I would like to think that's what I would do in that situation of, you know, try and not rub it in that man's face of like, you were the one who shit on me, but don't get me wrong, that would also be deeply, deeply satisfying, so. Let's head next to the Normandy docks. Now, time for another brilliant scene, and of course it's a brilliant scene, it's one of the better ones in the game, because it stars Garrus Vakarian. Shepard, if you're feeling up to it, I thought we could do something fun for a change. Shepard, glad you came. What'd you have in mind? Something that doesn't involve fighting Reapers. I don't think they've conquered the bar yet. I already scoped it out. But then I thought, if this was my last day alive, I'd actually like to remember it. So? So, I had an idea. Where are we going? Somewhere we're not supposed to. Now you're talking. Ever have that one thing you always wanted to do before you died, Shepard? I've woken up with a Turian next to me. Still trying to make me blush, huh? Until it works. So what's your one thing? The whole time I worked at CSEC, I'd stare up at the top of the Presidium and say to myself, I want to go up there. But I never did. There were 137 regulations telling me I couldn't. So you got them changed? No. Now I just don't give a damn. Figured it's time to do something stupid just for the hell of it. Might be the last chance we ever get. Incredible. I'd be lying if I said I didn't hope it would inspire a certain mood. Something on your mind? It seemed like you needed time to figure us out. Are you ready to be a one Turian kind of woman? The only thing that made leaving Earth bearable was knowing you were out there somewhere. I felt the same way. The worst part about the galaxy going to hell would have been never getting to see you again. Well, here I am. Exactly where I want to be. I love you, Garrus Vicarian. Wow. The vids Joker gave me, well, they never got this far. There was the part about sleeping together, but this is... I don't know exactly what to do. Who needs a vid when you've got me? Now, before we head back, there is one thing we're going to settle, once and for all. I'm not saying you don't know how to handle a gun, just saying some of us know how to make it dance. So, let's find out who's really the best shot. There are a few people in the galaxy who've seen me in action, Garrus. They seemed impressed. Yeah, but I've actually seen you dance, Shepard. No comment. All right, Vicarian, you're going down. And don't worry, I loaded it with practice slugs for when you miss. That was an easy one. Let you build up your confidence. Long range, I wrote the book. Nobody alive can do this, not even Commander Shepard. Give me a tough one. I said a tough one. Step aside. We have an option of how this plays out here. I don't normally suggest missing on purpose. Uh, I would say, you know, fucking beat the man. And if we were to choose, shoot the target, we would see this. Do it. Nobody alive, maybe. 
technically, I died. Yeah, well, next time we'll throw in a herd of rampaging clicks, and that's how you separate the rookies from the pros. But we get a fantastic line if we don't. Do it. I'm Garrus Vicarian, and this is now my favorite spot on the Citadel. It's windy up here. There, there. It's okay. I know there are other things you're good at. I think that scene is really well done. Uh, I really like the music that plays in it, because you hear that in some other parts, like when Liara's talking about like making the plan for the future of... of, of having the like the records dispersed everywhere that you can it's that song kind of plays at parts where it's like where you start to realize like both the enormity of everything that's happened so far and kind of start thinking forward in both a positive and a negative way it's it's it's, it's a bittersweet bit of music which fits those really well um next up we have cortez over here who's been blocked by a keeper there we go you finally made it off the normandy glad i did even with the chaos of all the refugees, seeing so many ships in flight is comforting. Gets me thinking. Hey, a Turian frigate. I think that's the PFS Havenkar. What's one Turian warship doing at the Citadel? Looking for dry dock, I bet. She's seen battle. Look at the waiver in her drive core emissions. Alone, limping, looking for a haven. Maybe it would have been better to just go down fighting, like their families back home. Are you talking about the Turians or yourself? I should have been there. With Robert. But you weren't. You're alive. And that's a good thing. Maybe so. The lives of future generations rest on those Turian shoulders. On our shoulders. Nobody's given up. Not those Turians. Not me. Not you. If anyone can pull this all together, it's you. Is that an Alliance cruiser? What's it doing here? That's the SSV London. Decommissioned years ago. Look, no guns. Refugees must have salvaged her from a shipyard. Geneva-class cruisers always had ESO cores like granite. People find a way to survive. Do whatever it takes to see another day? <sighs> I gotta let go. For real this time. The refugees here put up a memorial wall. They leave mementos of lost loved ones. I was thinking maybe... What's stopping you? Nothing. I mean... Let me think about it. I really like... Uh, the, so the game introduces a what the? That was weird. And I'll see that? Huh. Well, like Shepard drew a gun briefly. Um, but yeah, um... They, they 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 kind of shoehorned um you know garris no shoehorning there um they shoehorned in james into this and kind of you expected to kind of like him but then one of the, some of the characters they did just write for this game like like cortez who wasn't in any of the previous one i really like him as a character he's very well done so though again i say this james isn't well done he's he's not badly done he's just a shite um but yeah uh, there's the, cortez is a very well done and very human character um with that Final bit of business to do before getting on with the plot, don't worry. If we head up to the Spectre office, got a couple of things we can do on the... Uh, no, this wasn't what I was looking at, but this is useful as well. From the shop, we can buy a Sniper Extended Barrel, and that's about all we can afford. Oh, we can afford the Rosenkov Greaves as well. Uh, let's get them in that case, even though I won't use them. And then on the Spectre Terminal, we've got a couple of things... Uh, that we can't do yet. That we can do. Medical supplies originally meant for occupied zones have been rerouted to the Citadel because the reroute invasion has made delivery impossible. The supplies are currently in lockdown on the docks but can be released to the hospital under spectral authority. Authorize that. Commendation for um, Captain Riley, an N7 operative, um, who we worked with a couple of episodes ago. Absolutely authorize that. And here, a transfer authorization. Private Talavi has requested a transfer to a unit actively engaged in repostilities. A note from a sergeant says that the private is an exceptional engineer and recommended her for duty on a team set to sabotage reaper processing centers. It's actually worse for your war efforts if you authorize this. She basically goes out, gets herself and her team killed, and you lose readiness. So I actually won't be authorizing that. Finally, let's go and talk to Kermander Bailey, not the, not the Asari counselor. But we're getting there, we're getting closer. Um, look, the office is right there, and we're not going into it quite yet, but let's have a quick chat with Bailey. Uh, 
has so many pieces to put back together since the Cerberus attack. We're reeling from the implications. Udina in league with Cerberus trying to murder the Council. These are dark days for all of us. Thought you'd be in the hospital. If I'm breathing, I'm working. Probably the worst I've ever been hurt. Fitting, I guess, given the state of the galaxy. But if Cerberus thinks a few slugs is gonna keep me out of action, they've got another thing coming. Can this station be defended? The internal security breaches have been patched, but we're dangerously low on manpower. We're grilling our own people and trying to figure out if Udina acted alone, but it's time-consuming. All in all, we're still vulnerable, but I think we've taken the right steps. All that time you were working for Udina, did you ever suspect? Always rubbed me a little wrong. Still, that traitorous bastard upped me. Probably made me for an idiot. <laughs> I guess I proved him right. He's dead and you're still here, Bailey. <laughs> Thanks to you. If you hadn't shown up, Udina and Cerberus would be dancing on my grave. How does the Citadel fit into the war now? Uh, the war finally found us. This is so far beyond our imagination, and we have been trained to expect the unexpected. Since the coup attempt, folks are shutting down and shutting in. I hear a lot of praying. And crying. They're saying this is the war to end all wars. Well, I haven't seen anything to say they aren't right. No time for rest. Good luck, Bailey. Yeah, you too, Shepard. So, with that, we can now. So the Asari Counselor found some information and wanted to share it with us in Udina's office. Which has an impossibly long door. There we go. I want all remaining files secured and marked for Tentron clearance only. Commander Shepard, thank you for coming. Did you find something? The Council has ordered a full review into Donald Udina's activities. We're still piecing together his coup attempt. But that isn't why I asked you here. The situation is growing urgent for my people. We're aware your Crucible is still missing a key component. The Catalyst. Do you know something? Not exactly, but there is a artifact on our homeworld, Thessia, known only to highest levels of my government. What is it? With any luck, it's a means to help you locate the catalyst. The artifact is kept in a temple located at these coordinates. I've ordered a scientific team to meet you there. If this artifact is so important, why keep it hidden? Every species in the Citadel has its secrets, Commander. But this one, in the wrong hands, would upset the balance of galactic power. The Reapers are doing that right now. Which is why I'm bringing this to you. I appreciate the help. It's you who will be helping us. The Matriarchs are growing desperate. For the first time in our history, Thessia is vulnerable. For all our intellect, we're outmatched by Reaper firepower. I'll do what I can. Whether you know it or not, you've become the sole ray of hope in a very dark night. Goddess be with you. Well, we've had a mission on every other council homeworld, so obviously one on the Asari homeworld of Thessia was um, was was bound to happen sooner rather than later. Uh, oh, I've got another mission there, Cerberus Cyphers. Uh, and yes, that is what we'll be doing next episode. The final thing I will just throw in now is, at this point, exactly this point I'm at now, is when... Rex attacks you if you lied about uh, curing the genophage but actually sabotaged it. I haven't got any footage of that, and, and but just YouTube it if you're interested, because um, I don't want to pull someone else's footage into that. This feels that feels cheaty, but also I didn't want to play through half the bloody game just to record that footage. So there we go. Uh, next episode we will of course be moving on to Thessia. Hope you'll join me then. Thank you very much, and good day.